Today on This Week in Startups, Tony Conrad, venture capitalist and entrepreneur extraordinaire is with us. It's going to be an amazing episode. And an entrepreneur is going to wade into the shark tank. Will they be bait? Will they be, be eaten up? It's going to be brutal. <laughs> and Tyler is here with us. All that and more today, right now, and this very moment on This Week in Startups. What it's all about, man. They said money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. Yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Yeah. Money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. Yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Okay, okay, everybody. Welcome to the program. Welcome to the program. Uh, we've got an amazing show for you today. Not only do we have an entrepreneur with us, we also have a venture capitalist. Tony Conrad is with us. Uh, you know some of the things he's done, Sphere, About Me, uh, bought by AOL, both companies, and some of the companies he's invested in, WordPress, and uh, GDGT, and a bunch of other stuff. We'll get into that. The launch conference is coming up. We're going to give away um, one of these bags. Let's see the uh, This Week in Startups bag. So beautiful. Mmm, delicious. Mm, the bag? No. Oh, there it is. Mm, look how beautiful that is. A I man like, bag. I like how Tyler. They make you wait for it. Yeah. Yeah. Wait for it. <coughs> That's a man bag. Tyler can get behind. Um, beautiful man bag. Uh, tweet. Thank you to one of our sponsors, GoToMeeting or Mailchimp, and just thank them for sponsoring the program, and we will give you one of those for free. And hey, speaking of GoToMeeting, um, head over to GoToMeeting.com for your free 30-day trial with the promo code Start. Their software is flawless, and actually, Tony, you and I were on a go-to meeting. It was a great experience, Jason. GDGT last week, we were, uh, That's right. or two weeks ago, on a board meeting, and it's just flawless, and it feels like we're all in the same room. And interestingly enough, I, I was in my robe. <laughs> I wore, you know what it's like? I, I, You're always in your robe. I'm, well, it's true, meetings, it's true. Jason. And then this previous board meeting, I was uh, in a smoking jacket. It's, it's like an ongoing theme. Ever, I dress up for the board meetings. I wore but, a tie. Yeah, well, you're a suit. I mean, you're a VC. That's what you're supposed to wear. Uh, or a power sweater, either one. Power uh, sweater. All power way. sweater all the way. It's a San Francisco thing. But hey, go to meeting just works. <clears throat> it's seamless. It's flawless. I use it every week, almost every day, in fact. And if you're getting serious about business, you need to go over to gotomeeting.com and use the promo code START. Go ahead and check it out. You'll love it. And thank you to Echo to Meeting for sponsoring the program and independent media like this, which couldn't exist without the support of fine people like Go to Meeting. Uh, Tony. Venture capitalist, uh, advisor to AOL Ventures. You're a partner at True Ventures. Uh, you're on the board of Automatic, the company that makes WordPress. Uh, pretty big company there. Uh, GDGT, we're on that together. Uh, Typekit, Stock Twits uh, with my pal. Uh, what's his name? Howard. Howard. My pal Howard. He's a weird dude. Um, <laughs> it's like every tweet he does is like a drunk tweet. I don't understand. Um, anyway, he's got an alcohol problem. It's fine. Um, we'll talk about that later. He's obviously got a substance abuse problem if he's tweeting like that all the time. Uh, you found its fear. I did. Sold it to AOL. I did. Uh, you were on the board of Odd Post. That got sold to Yahoo. Uh, and um, you and Tim Young just did About Me. And four days after that, you sold it for $800 million to AOL, the, the, exceeding it, the Bebo. <laughs> so. Exactly. Uh, so Bebo was the target. What are you? Are you a venture capitalist or an entrepreneur? What do you consider yourself? So it's, it's a great question. Um, I always kind of think of myself first as a founder of businesses, mm. although my start was on the venture side. Um, and I come at it more from a founder's perspective. I right. think and that's helped me to become a better investor, actually. And it's mm -hmm. taught me a lot about how to work with entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. How to sit on boards, how to identify good ideas, you know, and, you know, some basic concepts. You know, being an entrepreneur is more of a contact sport, mm. and yeah, I like to always say to my partners, you got to yeah. be out there, you got to be in the flow, and right. so a lot of those lessons have really helped me on the venture side. So, um, what does it mean to be a, a found, be founder centric? What does that mean? I mean, it sounds nice; it would look good on a, you know, a website and a marketing kit. But, but what does it actually mean when you get down to it? When you're on a board? What's the difference between a founder-centric VC and a VC-centric VC? No, so I, th I think there's a lot of differences, and I can spot them. Almost. Really? Yeah, when I sit on so a board. So tell me what bad VC on a board does versus, say... Well, let's talk, let's talk about what a good VC does. Yeah. Or what a good investor... Let's, let's not make it about VCs yeah, investor. or whatever. A good investor, somebody yeah. who's on a board. So, um, you know, I think companies evolve a lot. And, um, 
you know, at the beginning, you know, when you have Peter and, and Ryan starting GDGT sure. as a good example, their needs are very different, and you need to be able to adapt to understand those needs. So is that, do you really need a board meeting every four weeks? Mm, Maybe not. Probably not, right? Yeah. And I think, like, you understand that, I understand that. Right. I'm not sure everybody that comes in, you know, yeah. to this ecosystem, and they're coming in it purely from an investor perspective, you know, understands that in the beginning. I that, think that it can be a little bit annoying, maybe as a founder, the, to every four weeks be doing that because you spend a week getting ready for it. Yeah. What I like to say is maybe we need to have board coffees. Board right? coffees, right? And, right, right. and maybe it's more individual, you know, yeah. kind of discussions, and 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 that doesn't always last, right? I, yeah. I think there's always a role for that kind of informal, maybe more one to two, you know, three people talking, but you know, as companies start to scale, companies like App Savvy or WordPress, where they start to have you know, serious scale, you know, yeah. opportunities and issues, then I think meeting on a more regular basis can be very helpful. Um, yeah. And the things that you cover in those board meetings changes. So, you know, I think what I learned once I became an entrepreneur, I started to look at this through a different lens and I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Okay, this is how, you know, I want to be worked with when I have an investor, right? right? And so, you know, I try to emulate that. So it's, when you're at scale, what I'm hearing is things are different than when you're nascent when you're trying to figure out what exactly is our product. <coughs> um, how long were you on the, the WordPress board, uh, the automatic board, um, and how did things change on that board? I mean, what are the topics early on in a company's life cycle, middle, and then towards the, the end when it becomes a scale business? Yes, yeah, so um, you know, I think I've been advising Automatic since mm -hmm. the very beginning. I've been on the board since day one, since we formed a board, but wow. I was there with Matt um, you know, before. Um, he informed the company, wow. right? So he and I were talking, he was in Houston. He obviously was involved in the open source side of the equation sure. on WordPress and was the leader you know, of that project. Right. Um, and was thinking about moving out to the Bay Area and he moved out to the Bay Area. He mm -hmm. worked at CNET for a while, if you remember. Yeah. And then when it was time for him to form a company, because it was always, I think, his destiny, yeah. um, you know, we started talking you know, about how to best go do that. So lots of introductions to you know, potential investors, started thinking through through. What is this, 2005, 2004? 2004, um, Four, I yeah. think, yeah, 2004, really starting the conversation. Wow. 05, he moved out here. Yeah. Um, and then getting guys like Tony Schneider. You know, Tony yep. and I had worked together on Odd Post. Tony yep. was CEO, I was on his board. Mm -hmm. um, he and I subsequently co founded Sphere. Mm. Um, and then we were also part of the founding team of True Ventures. You know, at the same time, we were getting WordPress, you know, helping Matt to get WordPress kind yeah. of structured and going. And so, what, the original question, um, what, what do you talk about at those, let's say, the first two years versus what happens, you know, when it's at scale? Like, is, what, what, are the, what should a board be focusing on? So, I, I, you and I yeah. have it. Let, let's switch it from automatic yeah. to gadget. Yeah. I sure. think this is a great example, right? right? So, what are we talking about at our last board meeting? We're talking about product. Product, product, product. Product, product product. Because that's all there right? is. Right? And, you know, who should we get involved in the company? Not from just being, you know, as, you know, full-time employment, but what type of people should we have around the company? What right. type of advisors should be there? Yeah. What type of people should be associated with the project as it's moving mm -hmm. towards a launch or a relaunch or, right. you know, a major evolution in their case? Right. Um, so, I think, I think, as that company becomes successful and that product gains traction, then there's a whole different set of discussions that start right. to happen. Okay, what kind of management team holes do we have? Right. How can we make this thing go faster? You know, capitalization questions around, does it merit going out and raising capital? If so, what kind of capital? And right. from who is the right fit, you know, right. to bring into this mix? So these are more complex, more tactical, and in the beginning, it's really like... Much more well, strategic. Yeah, strategic. And what, what are, Oh, yeah, right. More strategic, but earlier, it's tactical. It's very tactical. Like, in the what is our business? What exactly that's right. are we doing here? Well, that's a strategic question. Like, overall, where do we want to go? But the right. execution, ah, yes. which we're in, right. I think becomes extremely tactical. Right. It's that grind, right? Mm -hmm. It's just, I mean, it's literally that grind on the product. And so, what is True Ventures uh, in terms of the mission? It's a new venture capital firm. Sure. I know that. I think there's two or three funds. I'm not sure exactly how big are the funds and wh what's the sort of mission statement. I mean, it's it's obviously got a lot of people are very very well respected. I think with O'Malley and Matt, people with true credibility sort of are, are in the family. Uh -huh. um, why did you found it? What is the founding mission? So I, so John uh, Callahan, 
yeah. uh, John Burke and Phil Black are the three founding partners of it. Tony Schneider and I were there, you know, and part of the founding team. Um, Tony and I obviously have different roles. Tony's CEO yeah. of Automatic, um, and I was CEO of Sphere at the time. But True, um, True has two uh, funds. Both of them are about $200 million. Uh, great funds, uh, great group of guys. And I think what we felt was that the model um, you know, the model was a little bit broken in the sense that there was a lot of great venture uh, capital out there for companies that were a little further along, mm -hmm. but there wasn't really venture capital serving entrepreneurs at that initial stage. Right, any of these companies early. Exactly. And if you think about it, I mean, five yeah. years ago, you didn't really have Union Square Ventures, First no. Round, Us, you know, yeah. other, other folks in the game that People are serving. People tailored just to that Bingo. Sort of one person, two people with an idea, and maybe a website. That's right, and there, no were, an, there were angels, but they weren't what I'll call the super angels, or the right. professional, you know, right. professionally focused angels. Yeah, you wouldn't know if they're in Aspen or Tahoe, wh where that angel is at a given point in time. They might take six months off, they might be or back. Bingo, so yeah. we felt like there was a great opportunity to go serve that type of entrepreneur very early on. And we also knew, and I think everybody should have known, but we definitely knew as part of our ethos from the beginning, these companies don't need two, three million dollars to get going. No. Right? These companies need a half million It's dollars. almost distracting. Yeah, it's, it's actually, it's a disadvantage but in a lot do, of cases. I like to say to an entrepreneur, your time is your best currency. Mm. It's your most valuable asset. You know, you got two million dollars, trust me, you gotta hang out with it for a long time, much longer than, even if you know it's not working or it's not going to work, you, know, you gotta sit around and what do I do? Yeah, because it's hard to give that money back. Right. Right. You right. could, but emotionally it's like, ah, I can't do that. It becomes that. a burden. It becomes a forcing mechanism for saying, ah. does this thing really merit when you have less money? Does it really merit additional? There is capital? a point in time, nine, twelve, whatever months out, that the person has to look deeply at themselves and say, Is this worth pursuing again? There's a decision mm -hmm. point to be made. As opposed to if you have three million dollars and four or five people, you can go for four years. There you go. In the wrong direction. You got enough fuel, enough rope to hang yourself in a way. <laughs> How much of the early stage when you meet these young entrepreneurs, first time entrepreneurs, I guess is a, a lot of the focus. Um, even O'Malley, first time entrepreneur uh, yeah. with his product, journalist turned entrepreneur and now turned VC. Um, how much of it is about building their confidence and building them up to believe that they can do it um, I think it's almost 100 percent. Yeah. I mean, listen, I mean, Ohm is a great example. Right. I mean, Ohm was, he's, you know, had one of the most popular tech blogs, one of the most top popular blogs, period. Right. You know, it's, it's in his top DNA, blog, yeah. you know, and Ohm talked for a long time about breaking away from the traditional kind of mm -hmm. journalism model that he was, he was at B2O at the yeah. time, you know, Time Warner Company. Um, Business 2.0. Business 2.0. Right. Um, and you know, he talked, he talked for a long time to do that. And actually what it ended up it taking. It was years. So he, he yeah. it's, it's a great story. So he came over to our, our little kind of satellite office in the city and. This um, is the one on the pier? Yeah, uh, no, this is one before that, over oh. in the Presidio. Okay. And so it was Phil, John, myself, Tony, we're all there. I think John Burke might've been there as well. And uh, so he came in and, you know, it was just more informational, like what's going on in blogging, self-publishing, yeah. why is this an important trend? Right. And um, at the end of it, we just wrote him a physical check. Before he left the building. He, he wasn't even, he, was, he hadn't even started his company, he hadn't even agreed to start his company. And you're just like, you're taking We're just like, oh, like, you need to do this. No brainer. Right? And you can do this. You're right. already doing this. Right. Here, this will help. Right. right. How it, big is a check like that? Two hundred fifty. I think it was two fifty. Two fifty. Yeah, I think it was. I mean, we just made out to O'Malley or the name of his company. <laughs> I made out to Jason Calcanis. I like this. I like this idea. <laughs> hmm. I have an idea right now. Um, and so it really is. I mean, I found that now with the angel investing, a lot of it is letting the guys know, like, hey, you are going to kick ass, and yeah. this is going to kick ass, and you can do it. And there's no difference between you and the people who have done it before you. That's right. I mean, in a way, if you look at Facebook. I, I sort of think, uh, at the end of the, the day, people are going to look at um, uh, Justin Timberlake as the person who played Justin Timberlake. Sean, Sean Parker. Sean Parker. Uh, no, yeah, no, no Justin, Justin Timberlake played Sean Parker. Oh, right, right, right. Oh, but okay. hey, I'll bet you J JT would love to be Sean Parker. I'm, I'm just yeah. <laughs> Sean Parker's chops right now. He's so, he's so infuriated about the whole movie. I was hanging out with him and at the DLD but conference. But he and JT are good friends. Well, he's just like, I never ordered apple martinis. I would never order an apple martini. That is just so ridiculous. Oh, I I'm mean, sorry. It should I would have a cord or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so if you think about Sean Parker's role in Facebook, it's almost like 
that was the critical moment. He made Suck believe he could do it, brought yeah. him to the valley, pumped him up, got him to Peter Thiel, and set him on his way. No Sean Parker, maybe no Facebook, at least not to the extent we know it. That's right. You agree? I do agree. Interesting point. Um, so, but I mean, you have to be yeah. careful. Though. I mean, you don't need to have false bravado. No. Either, right? No. I mean, I think there's a there. We have companies in our portfolio where we sit down and we say, you know, is it really what you want to do? I mean, it's your call. But right. like, is this really? You know, we almost like say, hey, we don't want the money back. We're not angling here to right. get the money back, right? We bet on you, anyways, right? More so than your idea, we bet on you. Right. We still are betting on you. Right. Maybe take what you have left here and channel it in a different direction, even if it means scrapping 100 percent what you. Do have. you do that with all of them just to see if how they respond? No, no, no. So you wouldn't do that because you don't want to put inside their no. head like some doubt that you have doubt. No, that's right. But if there is sincerely like this isn't really that great of a product or it's not really getting traction, you'll just say to them like, hey, do you really sure. want to do that? That's how you phrase it? That's right. And what happens? And, 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 and there's Has any of them ever cried or something like that? Or no. broken down and been like, I don't want to do this? I, I've never made an entrepreneur cry. No? No, okay. I have not. No, uh, but what happens at that cool moment? That. What do you know? You look in their eyes and you just look for that tinge of like... You can see it. You can see you it. You can see hesitation. A little hesitation. Like, yeah. Maybe there's something else I should do. It's like in sports. It's like in anything. Mm -hmm. You know, you see, you see that... Uh, Okay. Maybe this I got it. Mm -hmm. I see it all the time when people are pitching us. That they don't actually believe what they're saying? That they've got questions. Yeah, uh, there's doubt. There's doubt. There's a little yellow flag. You just like you. They don't believe it themselves, perhaps. Yeah, you can tell they're kind of just saying it. And then they'll come back. I mean, we've had lots of situations where we've just said to somebody, hey, look, you know, we're not convinced about the market, or we're not convinced about this, or convinced right. about your team or the mm -hmm. tech. And they've actually come back and confided almost immediately and said, you know what? Thank Right. The truth. The truth. shall you free. Fuck yeah. You know, it's like, it's I don't. Like, so, whoops, oops, sorry. Uh, $10 <laughs> in the jar. 17 minutes in. We got our first F-bomb. We need like a whoop, whoop. Can we get that? Ask Will to get me like an alarm whenever anybody comes. We no, have a rule that $10 look, goes I'm, in the jar anytime. I, I, listen, I'm good for it. But um, I'm no Dave McClure, but um, they will drop. Oh my God. He they will is drop. They will drop. I love Ron Conway, who's like, I find that this, you're too vulgar to be. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Ron Conway's like all of a sudden the grumpy, the grumpy old man of the industry is so upset at Ron Conway. There's nothing old man about Ron Conway. No, I love Ron, but I mean, Ron's he just. young when, at heart, and he's awesome. At some point, he was just. Uh, Really upset at the whole like, Angel Gate, Dave McClure thing, and Dave oh, yeah. McClure is like, I'm an effing gangster on his blog, and Ron Conway's like, this is just vulgar, and I just thought it was an awesome like moment between generations of angel investors, like, oh you know. that whole drama, isn't that funny? Uh, yeah, this manufactured drama. Manufactured drama, completely nothing. false, nothing. nothing, nothing there, no there there, there, as we say in the biz. There you go. So speaking of angel stuff, uh, last week. Somebody lops a grenade into the middle of the industry. Hey, the Russian, mm -hmm. we call him the Russian, Yuri, uh, DST, uh, says, I'm, I t I'll take everything. They gave him the menu, and he opened it up, and he said, hey. And he, they gave him the menu and said, hey, we have some specials. Would you like any specials? And he just said, no, I'll take it all. 43 companies, $150,000 each, absurd, no terms, you know, whatever. What was your initial reaction? What, and give me honest about it, because I know that you, like DST, you got to like, be worried about that because there could be, you got companies that are invested in that they could wind up working with. But you got to be a little bit gentle. But what was your initial reaction? Did you just say to yourself, this is crazy? This is a bubble? Um, I don't know if, I, well, I don't know if it's crazy. And I'm not trying to be like careful right. here. How, uh, but how did I, re you know, like I kind of look at it like, wow, that's bold. It was definitely and wild, I, and, right? And I think my second thought was like, what's that mean? What does it mean? And I don't know what it means, right? You know. Let's unpack um, it right now. Well, well, I guess we can try to unpack it. Um, I think, you know, there's there's a bunch of different things where we're seeing this broader trends, broader than that, which is just the amount of capital sitting on the sidelines being poured into a ton of ideas. Especially, Where's this money coming from? Especially in the consumer space, individuals. You know? High net worth individuals. Yeah, you go. I mean, like Yuri's backed by a big uh, Russian guy who has well, well, let's millions take of Yuri dollars. out of the equation. Yeah. There's just a, we already had this problem. There was right. already, in my opinion, a problem. Like, so people ask me all the time, like, what's interesting? And I'll say, well, consumer's interesting. Yeah. But I'm not sure I want to put a lot of dollars to work in consumer, hmm. because the valuations are getting a little bit ahead it's of crazy. themselves. I think companies are getting structured in a way that it's very binary for the 
um, for the entrepreneur and for the early investors. Meaning, what, go big, go big, or go, you know, or go nothing. home, or get nothing. Because I think once your valuations so early on get Just a little bit ahead of themselves, and a little bit ahead of themselves is going instead of it being valued at three, being valued at six. Right. It's subtle. But just doing that takes a lot of option value in the near-term future of early exits. The $25 million right. dollar exit, uh, the $30 million dollar exit, which I would characterize are three exits at AOL, probably in that range, reportedly. Yeah. Um, those are very profitable exits if you've only got 15% of your stock owned by other investors. Bingo. And I 85% like, of $30 million, dollars, a lot of money. It is always good to have option value. Options create options in our industry. Eighty-five percent of so, thirty million dollars so, sounds pretty good to me. But let's let's go back. Let's go back to your your uh, your, your your question. So so you're like, what so does that mean? So I kind of wow. look at this like, okay, it was a flash grenade. It, it's like maybe that might be a very interesting strategy. Yeah. Um, but spray you know, and pray. But they're not. You know, I don't. I, I, you know, I, I don't know if it's spray and pray because the, Y Combinator in uh, theory has a filter, a filter yeah. mechanism Paul Graham, right here, genius. and what they're saying. All those, developers. You know, those entrepreneurs don't have to take the money. They'll take the money if they want. It's just option value. It's just money that gets priced well, at a later. Who's not going to take that money? No, though? what they're doing. I mean, the terms what they've are done, amazing. What they've done. The terms are great. What they've done is said, I want to seat at the table at the next round, no matter what that round is priced, and no matter who leads it. Mm. That's what. Once the entrepreneur has taken that money down, mm -hmm. that's what happens. So for the entrepreneur, I think it's a great advantage. Right. Nothing wrong with that. They have the high ground. There we go. Because. Um, who has the high ground? I'm sorry. The entrepreneur has the high ground because the investment of 150,000 has no discount, and that 150,000 goes at whatever they can get another person to put. That's right. So the next round, the next round's done at a 15, 15 20 million dollar valuation. That money's going to price. one percent. He's going to get one percent at 15. There you go. Whoa. That's a lot of risk to take. It's a six-month-old company, six-week-old company. I don't know how old the company is. Yeah, but what he's identified, what we all know, this is a hits-driven business. Ah. All he needs is one hit? I don't know. Depends on how much six money he put. He's putting six say. million dollars out. Right. Let's, say, let's unpack that. Let's mm. say he had 1% of Google. Hello. Hello. 1% of Facebook. Billion dollars. Pretty much guaranteed. Two and billion in the Google case. 1% of Twitter. 1% of WordPress. For, uh, 40 million. Uh, four million. It's like, right? He breaks even, yeah, or makes a ton. There you so go. basically, it's not spray and pray. If we to recap, because it's all Paul Graham filtered. There is some logic to it because if you spread across forty-three companies and you already saw, saw Heroku come out uh -huh. at two hundred million, if you had one percent of that, that's two million right there. And let's be honest, they're not going to price at fifteen. It's more likely they're going to price at eight, mm -hmm. which means he's really going to get two percent or something. So two percent—that's four million dollars right Who'd there. Make, let's call it three. Let's, he would have been halfway three. there. Yeah, exactly, halfway there. Now, what does that do? And, and, and let's, let's let's think about it from his perspective. Yeah. So I don't know what his net worth is. I don't even know what pool yeah, we, of capital they, this is coming from. Well, but for him, to, he, I he's, had taking, some intelligence he's on that. taking a six million dollar bet. Right. There's a high probability he'll get, he'll make money on that. Sure. Um, there's certainly a very high probability he'll get half of it back. Sure. So he's taking a three million dollar bet here. Three million dollar risk, and to have a chance to play to be one two percent of something like Facebook, WordPress, Twitter. It's a hell of a marketing program. That's great. Just for that, I mean, now That's he great. was the player in late stage. He, they were supposed to be the dumb money. Let's be honest here. When they came in and they did those valuations of Zynga, Groupon, and Facebook, pretty much everybody in the industry said these guys are paying double the valuation anybody's willing to pay. This is a bubble. These are the last guys in. These are the guys going to be left holding the bag. No. No? No. What was the reaction in the no. industry? No. It, it, you know, this is where terms get, I think that was the reaction of the industry, but I don't agree with it, because ah. this is where terms come into play. So even, let, they get let, let's, say, let's say you, you do $15 billion valuation in Facebook, mm. and let's say you put um, $15 million in it. Right. All right. Your real risk here, depending if it's structured as preferred capital or of not, it is. It's is that it has to clear $15 million. I think it's going to happen. I think, I think he's going to get his my, money back. Right. Where he has risk associated with you know an internal rate of return an IRR right. kind of mechanism yeah. is the percentage you're making on your money not right. the absolute he has a risk between you know that yes. that point that 15 million dollar right. point and boy so you can know, he out beat there. the stock market in return 20 or 30% a year year, year year but if you're investing a, a rich 
oil guy from Russia's billions of dollars, which is sitting in a mutual fund, or I don't know what that people with that much money invest in. They're probably in low percentage things. They're just trying to protect value, so it's an easy bet. So I would suspect, in the case of Goldman's investment, that it's very similar. Right. They put a five hundred million dollar, you know, bet, and I would imagine it's structured as you know preferred capital. I would I hope. It out first. If it is, then that money comes out first, mm. and, and they get the IPO. There you go. Well, maybe they've positioned themselves the in a very horse. strong yeah. spot to be the lead horse. So, um, and this is not DST's money. They were clear about saying that, uh -huh. and then somebody told me that Goldman gave him the money. I don't know. If that was true, what would that mean? I don't know. I don't care. Who cares? I don't care. What does it do for the other angel investors? Where's my money come from? Where's your money come from? You know, I don't LP, care. Who cares? Um, LPs or individuals, it's my money. It's money. It, it comes. Right. It's well, clean. For the is that true for the entrepreneur? Should the entrepreneur care where the money comes from? Well, sh I mean, to a certain degree. Like, right. you don't want to be, you know, taking money from, from unsavory sources. Sure. But he's not an unsavory source, so the money's going to be fine. Most people say that. I think almost everybody says that. There's been some reports that the well, the, actually, the guy who is the Russian guy who uh, founded DST was in jail in the 80s and then pardoned by whoever. But nobody uh -huh. wants to talk about that story. Well, I don't. Certainly you do not. <laughs> I mean, but I mean, it's I want to talk about AOL. Exactly. Come well, on. Well, moving on. Let's let's not talk about the Russian mafia or anything like that. Um, we have to cut this part of the program out because. It's probably a little too hot for the industry to handle. But there, I mean, I, I got about 50 emails, Tyler, after this. I wrote the Y Combinator thing, and <coughs> this is the Russian Mafia investing in Y Combinator. I said, no, it's not. And then people send me to all these pages on the internet. The guy who is the patriarch of DST was in jail for some period of time, but he was pardoned by, um, who was the big guy in Russia for that period of time? Not Putin, but before him. Gorbachev pardoned him. Anyway, uh, <laughs> moving on. Right now, Tony's like, please What's, move on. <laughs> Can we please? And what does that mean? I mean, you know, it's Russia. It's Russia. Who knows <laughs> I mean, what was going know, down? 20 years ago. Exactly. Who knows? Well, I mean, do, I mean, yeah, what was happening in Germany uh, with East Berlin and, I, you know, in the I, 80s? It means nothing Who knows? Me. It means nothing. Uh, but what does it mean when somebody does something like that to first round True, Angel, Saka, McClure? What does it mean when they try to go invest in a Y Combinator company? Do you think other people are going to try to do this method? You know, you see a Dave McClure, or a Chris Soccer, or a True, or a first round say, we're going to put 50000 into each one? Are you guys, did you guys have a discussion saying, hey, True should do this? No, we did not. Um, really? No, because that's not our model. Our Why model, not? Why not? Why wouldn't the, you do what the, you did? The, no, you said it was a good idea. No, it, it, there's lots of good ideas. I think investing later stage can be a great idea, too. It's not what we do. Ah. What we do is we try to put in sub $1 million uh, into a company, and we must always own excess of 20 percent of oh. that business so we're anchoring right we're going to be Long your partner term. just like with peter and and, and ryan Matt with Mullenweg. gadget or mullenweg right and just everybody like we want to be the anchor right we're vested we're in this for an outcome a certain right. you know kind of journey um which is very different than right. let's just spray and pray put our money everywhere um the reality is i don't think it impacts us um this you know now this might set a set of dominoes that impacts the industry at whole uh, or at large, and it you know sweeps us up in that. I have no right. idea what that could be, um, but you know we already we're seeing you know a handful of companies from Y Combinator. Just because it's a Y Combinator company doesn't mean that it's we're going to we're going to run and and do it. Right? right, we've done a couple. Um, we love working with those those guys. I think we'll continue to see them. Why is that? They're going to raise a different check. You know, they're going to raise a larger check. Right in a lot of these cases. Yeah, I mean, they're not going to just take the 150 and work for another year. They're going to probably do 500. That's right. 750, probably 1 million on average Maybe. in this market. So you're, there's plenty of room for other people. That's right. I mean, they, they have $170,000. If they yeah. take the 150 from 20. You know, this mechanism, right. like 20 from Right, so two people Paul. can work for a year, a year and there a half. There you go, and they're going to go sort of raise. takes them out of the ramen noodle. Um, the philosophy of Y Combinator was always just two people who build, building, ramen noodle style, you know, stripped down acoustic. Do you think yeah. what made Y Combinator special now might change because of it? Does money no, what, change everything? No, no. What made Y Combinator successful mm. is that he tapped into building a community. Ah. That's it. It's the alumni? When we invest in a company as brilliant as, you know, John Callahan or Phil Black or John Burke or Tony or myself or yeah. Ohm or Puneet might be, right. you know, 
it's irrelevant. The value is that they become part of our portfolio. They become part of a community. They have a group of people to like bounce things off of. And I think Paul has done a phenomenal job with Y Combinator. Hmm. Phenomenal. It is pretty amazing. It's very impressive. Yeah, you come out of school and you don't know how to plug into the network. What a great network to go plug into. It's just like all Or if you're fortunate enough to get invested, you know, by first round capital or us or Fed yeah. at Union Square. They're going to walk you through Sequoia. all this. It doesn't really matter. Like, you can be, you get plugged into that. It's just you're off to the races. It, it's, it's such an advantage. How long, you know, and how valuable is that education that they give at a Y Combinator or your company? Like, it seems to me like when I was coming up as an entrepreneur in the mid 90s, you know, uh, into the late 90s, you had to figure all this stuff out on your own. Yeah. Difference between an LLC and an S Corp and a C Corp, you know, preferred stock, a term sheet. It was almost like the whole industry was so opaque. It's like the whole industry's been open sourced. It is because when I, I remember, all the, all the, it's all out there. Right? There was no the term sheets available. No. I was like, when I was starting, I was like, could I see a term sheet? And it was like, oh, well, we'll give you one. But <laughs> it was like almost like all the VCs back then did not want anybody else to see a term sheet. And if you got a term sheet, you wouldn't show it to any other entrepreneur. That was considered like not appropriate. Now That's it's right. like everybody's term sheet is plastered everywhere. And there's millions of Brad Felds, whatever, blog posts explaining, like, here's what a term sheet is, here's how to break it down. Is it too easy? Maybe. Maybe? Getting a little easy? Well, let's, you have to look at that. You have to unpack that. Let's unpack a lot that of one. Different this lenses, is an interesting discussion. Right? Yeah. So, um, boy, it couldn't be, it can never be easy enough for individuals who have a passion to go start a business, right? You right. know, that is the American dream. It's like right. everybody. Get you, the red tape out of the way, I go mean, do it. This is amazing, yeah. right? For, for anybody. Quite a moment Coming out of school or doesn't go to school, it doesn't matter. This is like, like, an incredible journey. You've been on it. Yeah. I've been on it. I mean, what fun? Is there anything more fun? Not that I can think of. I mean, it reminds me of like when I played sports. Right? It, I was about to say, you know what it reminds it, me of? Like being it, part of a yeah, team. Yeah, it reminds right? me the of playing in the World Series of so, Poker so, or something. So, you know, so like, I think from that It's up there in terms of peak experience. It's phenomenal. Yeah. More money, more good. Yeah. But there is an impact somewhere in the ecosystem. Right. Right, because there's not a tremendous amount of exits in the IPOs, and, and well, it's cyclical. You know, we've been saying that for now for a decade, and right. we're still waiting. We're still but, waiting for but, the shooter drop. And this might be the year, and next year well, might be. Let's be honest. Year. Between but, 2001 but, and 2005, there were not a lot of companies founded. There's not. But between 2006 and 2011, or 2008 and 2011, it's crazy. It's insane. Between 2008 and 2011, there are probably more companies than. Between 2001 and 2008, right? I would think so. Yeah. Yeah. I would think so. We're going so, three times as fast. So so. So all of a sudden, it becomes harder to select. It means there is noise. more noise, more difficult to actually build traction. Competition. You know, the competition is crazy. The funding can be crazy. Mm -hmm. um, valuations go up, the, and the amount of users and, and, and many, customers goes how down. How many exits are there out there? Right. Now, what might happen, there might be this whole mid-tier of companies, because I do think the tech companies are getting wealthier. By the minute, sure. the big the difference. Cash the, the big bank. difference. The big difference in this decade versus the last decade is, is what? the economics showed up. Right. There's money. People, People are, are making money. spending money on yes. services. Yes. People aren't shocked that you ask them for their credit card. Right. People aren't shocked to pay you money. Advertising. There you go. Or to see the advertising. All this has matured Group tremendously. On. So, you know, what I my fear is though we wake up and we've got a ton of businesses that are really small revenue. We got. We have a profitable. thousand businesses making one to five million dollars that are profitable. There you go. What do you do with them? What do you do with them? You've just recreated Main Street. Bingo. And that's not the venture business. That's not the venture business. You've the just gotten a return is, is of Walmart. A, you, you built five. You built, it's not the local store. It's Walmart. Uh, you built thousands of dude businesses, two or three dudes on a website. There you go. Enough to sustain them a lifestyle business. That's my fear. Right. When, so when there's an influx of capital, that's my fear. So it's not failure. And then the other thing. It's is, modest success. The other thing is that I do think a number of these companies, because, um, you know, my, my, my dad has a great expression, be careful, you might get what you ask for. And I always tell this to young entrepreneurs, like, hey, look, I, you, we, we might value you at three million or four million. Right. You might be able to go get six or seven million, but, you know, like, you really need to think that through. I mean, is that really, yes, it's great short term. A lot less dilution, maybe even a little more capital, right, for that dilution. Right. But maybe it sets you up on a trajectory that you're not ready for, or you mm -hmm. don't have enough data, market right. data, or enough even like, do I like working with this group of people? 
it's my co-founder like, or in a way, these investors or these advisors. Like, you know, like you're like, you know, it's hard. You know how hard it is to get a ten million dollar exit, man. Yo, it's work. I mean, people Getting realize people to wire brutal. that money into a bank account is hard. People have to. Somebody there has to go. say, "Here's ten million dollars." Yeah. You. It's now in your bank account. So not when you mine. Just, when you just took somebody's money. And value in your company at seven, eight million dollars in the first round, it's not sexy for to exit at ten. Or it 20. might be for you, the individual, right? But your investors, that's, you're not, you're no longer that, aligned, is what happens. There's no alignment. All right. When we case. come back from the commercial break, I want you to tell me the three deals that you passed on that keep you up at night. I know there's three, so I want you to think about that. The ones that you say, my God, if I did that, I would have been Sequoia. I would have, I passed on this. I would have made a billion, I would have flown here instead of on Southwest. I would have come to LA, Jason, on a Falcon, my own plane, my own G5, when we come back. But one thing I want to tell everybody about is the very exciting MailChimp. Everybody knows uh, the launch newsletter and Jason Nation are uh, powered by MailChimp. And this is incredible news. We need to have like a da 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 Charge! We need like sound effects guy in here, you know? Like everybody knows that it used to be that you would get a thousand subscribers absolutely free to use MailChimp. I heard it's two thousand now. And I woke up today with a thousand tweets. Jason, MailChimp is now free for up to two thousand emails. I mean they're just so generous with their product. They've redesigned it, it's gorgeous. This is uh, my favorite subscribers. Basically. You can have two thousand subscribers. You can send to them constantly. They are huge. Huge, 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 and um, they've redesigned their entire site and the app. Uh, they're integrated uh, with Amazon's new SES, and they are handling transactional emails. Uh, what a great company. What a great sponsor for the show. I, I use the product, and you know every product that's on this program, if I don't use it and love it, I'm just not going to let them advertise. There's a lot of people who want to advertise on the program. We say no to probably two out of three people. We, I'm not going to say the names of people who have subpar products. But I just don't, you know, like I'm far enough along in my career, Tony, that I don't need the money for the show. I, you know, I'd rather just have the show not make money than have a sponsor who's not correct. This is a correct sponsor. I use their product every day. Mailchimp, Mailchimp, Mailchimp. <laughs> I like to sell, Tony. I like to sell. I'm willing to. <laughs> I, you know. Would you make a commercial so, about me? I will do. Just for me. If you want, I'd love that. Why don't you? You could sponsor the program. I'll do a True Ventures commercial. <laughs> and I'll, I, How about an AOL commercial? I forget. will do an AOL I, commercial. I, I work for AOL. You well, do? I do. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Wait a second. How do you work for AOL? <laughs> I do. All right, it's we're part back. Of the, part of the acquisition. Really? Yeah. But you still are a VC. I am. I do both. I mean, you sound like me now. You have like eight jobs. No, I have two jobs. You have two jobs. Have what two is your jobs. job at AOL now? Well, I have one job I focus on, and oh. that is waking up and trying to make about.me a household name. That uh, is it. That's now, what I do. This was Pumpkinhead. This was Pumpkinhead. Everybody was buzzing about it. There you go. And uh, it comes out similar to Flavors.me or uh, these other, there's a couple of other sites that do it, but none of them have reached scale yet. Essentially, it's a one page capture of all of my social media in one place. This is like my business card on the uh -huh. internet. Well, is that the concept? It's like a splash page. A splash page? Yeah. A billboard? It's like a billboard for you as an but individual. But interactive. Yeah. And it's, well, it's dynamic because mm. we integrate these services. You, you can integrate your Twitter, your Facebook, Flickr, Flickr whatever it is. Right. And those things, assuming that you're updating them right. and you're active in those networks, that means your page is always living, mm. right? And you can change your photo as much as you want, but if you never change your photo, the page is still alive. Yes. And is the uh, so is it like um, for people who don't want to blog? Um, no, no, uh, no. I, I How'd you get that domain name, by the way? <laughs> I mean, that is a great domain name. Well, first of all, I just had <laughs> breakfast with the domain dot me people this morning. Really? Uh, yes, the government of Montenegro, um, and it's a great. It, I think it's this is this is I think um, there's moments when you're building the government a company where you realize like I was an entrepreneur there. There I put on the gear, hmm. and I wouldn't made that happen, right? So, so you went to the government of Montenegro so, and said, so, can I so, have that? No, the first thing I did is I asked Tim uh, Young, my co-founder in this. From Social... Ryan, uh, Ryan Freitas. Uh, social... Uh, social Cast. Cast. There you go. You've, Who's had, on the you've had Tim on the program. I've had Tim on the program. Um, and then Ryan Great Freitas, uh, who worked with me through Adaptive Path on right. Sphere, is the other co-founder. But anyways, so the first thing we did was um, I asked him, hey, look, we need to get this URL. And I've been referring to it as about me. 
you know, do you think we can get that? Mm. And I have no idea how to go do that. So Tim put me in touch, or Heaton, one of those guys, put me in touch yeah. with Crudel Desai. Crudel. Crudel. I know, you know the Crudel. Oh, my Crudel, God. Crudel, who is the founder of Sponge. A true back. Is company. it really? There you go. Oh, Crudel is such a disaster. I, no, I have so many good stories. Of it. No, he's great. But <laughs> I know Crudel phenomenal. from when he was a younger kid. So, so I have Crudel stories. So listen. So Crudel, I'm not going to tell the Crudel stories. You know. So I may not have the chops to figure out how to navigate right. in that. No, Crudel's a hustler. Crudel, I got respect for Crudel. Crudel, man. Like I said, dude. Here's what I want. I, I really want this URL. Can you help me get it? He's like, I'll go figure it out. So what he did was he's he, like knocking on somebody's he, door. He, he figured out where it was. He figured out who to talk to. He even helped me write, or actually he wrote, and then I edited, if I even made any edits, right. on an application for the mm. thing. But it got us to the table. And then the magic started happening, totally. which is a lot of conversations. And most of them in the wee hours of the morning. Like, Crudo would call me at 1 or 2 a.m. Right. We'd get the people from Montenegro on the phone. Where is Montenegro? <laughs> Montenegro? I don't even know. Is that a country? Ex, ex, ex Yugoslavia, there, right, right on the Croatian coast, yeah. right below Croatia. And, between Albania beautiful and country Georgia. there, actually. It is beautiful, very, very beautiful. Did you fly there? No, 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 no. So, but you called the domain registrar. So we called, and I spent a lot of time. And the first thing I did, and this is one of the things I always instruct you know, young entrepreneurs, is always have the discipline to start why. Think like a V, mm. right? So it's always broad to narrow. Every time you get on that phone call, don't start talking about like what it is you want. Start talking about who you are, mm. OK? What's interesting about you and the people that are involved? Give them a context so they can put their hooks in it. Or right. you know, maybe there's a name that's associated with your project, mm -hmm. a Chris Saka or an Evan yeah, Wayne, yeah, whatever yeah. it is that's associated with your project. So that you're they might them up be able a little to put, bit. There you go. And have the discipline every subsequent call. Mm -hmm. If there's a new person on that call, even if five of the six people have already heard the story, mm. to say, I apologize, let's take a step back. Big For picture. our exes, Natasha's you know, better fit, let me just give you a quick soundbite on who we are, yeah. all right? Because it creates seconds. credibility. Uh. And when you're the government of Montenegro and you're thinking about which of these special names, like about.me, um, mm. who you're going to give them to, mm. Think about that, right? They don't right. know how to bet on is this a good business or a bad business. Right, but you can say, hey, but boy, they but can we're they can make an instinctive bet that WordPress, so it's the you know top it's, 10 company. there you go. It's True Ventures Hello. is behind it. Ron Conway's right. behind yeah, it. Ron Conway, you know, Google guy, there you go. In you know, Josh Feltzer, the yeah. guys from Kleiner. It's like yeah. all that Legit. stuff makes it legit. It's almost storytelling. There you go. And so we and did that's that. That's what entrepreneurs and are, then, right? And then, and then so you have to be a good storyteller, and you Absolutely. always have to. I mean, you always have to have that discipline to tell the story. It's your narrative. You story. get to set the agenda. It's one time, mm. right? It's great. So, you know, once once we got the credibility thing to the side, then we started talking about what it is we wanted to do mm -hmm. and why we thought it would be successful. And there's a moment I think, you know, very early on, where they would have said, "Yeah, let's go do this," but I didn't. I, I kind of saw that moment, but I didn't take mm. it. I felt like we needed to go deeper. I really wanted them to understand that we actually had a real plan mm. on what we wanted to do. So we had started those conversations in early '09. You know, what, wow, wow. I mean, like early '09. Um, and so, what? A little equity, a little cash? Um, a little uh, no, no equity, a no little equity. cash. A little cash. Very little cash. Wow. Because oh, their interest was they want to drive exposure uh, they want for the domain dot me. And now everybody's all over the dot There you go. And everybody's Smart. over them. And when they see like... It was like me Dick embracing Co dot co. <laughs> when they see Chris Soccer, Dick Costello, mm -hmm. Veronica Belma, yeah. Peter Rojas, you know, uh, mm -hmm. Lion Block, all these people Opinion are leaders. <laughs> wow. Opinion leaders. That's great. Awesome. Kevin Rose. That's great. Yeah. That's great. I mean, and, and so four days after it comes out, AOL buys it. I'm so, assuming so, AOL was in discussions with you before it launched. So AOL, so absolutely. So um, AOL was um, an investor. So as we all know, I sold you know Sphere, which I co-founded yep. with Martin Remy and Steve Niker right. and Tony Schneider. Um, we sold that to AOL in uh, spring of 08. Good timing. Yeah. Great timing. Great Good. deal for everybody involved. Um, and I stayed with AOL for 18 months. And I, in that time frame, one of the things stayed I made clear. Stayed with AOL. That well, mean you were still venturing. Well, exactly. Still so running the company. One of the things that was core to me right. is that I am a, a you know, I'm a part of the founding team right. of this thing called True Ventures. And that's not going to go away. Right. You know what I mean? That's, that's, these, are my, these are my buddies. These right. are people I want to. you do. This is where I want to end the game, mm. not right. start the game. Right. right. This is not something that's you know fungible. This is like. This is not know, a springboard. This there is. There you go. And so, 
so it makes it a little tricky. So the acquirer right. has to be comfortable with that, right? right? That I'm not going to that you're going to get half their time or a so third of their time. This whatever. helped me tremendously in when, I, when we came back to our discussions with AOL because, um, you know, we didn't we didn't mess them up, right? right. You know, we went and we worked. You did them right. We did them right, and I we mean, stayed there for a long do. time. When, when somebody and we continued to invest on. The, I continued to invest mm. in that same time period. You know, the things are very symbiotic. Right. Okay. The, the, no conflict, no interest. Let, let's think. Uh, I, well, <laughs> I know that's your phrase. I like. I like that. But I, I like, Michael Moritz's but, phrase. Actually. <laughs> I can't I, even tell I, you how conflicted I, just, I am. Right I just. I really like to tell people it's unbelievably symbiotic. You know, having I'm on Heaton Shaw's board at right. Kissmetrics. Do you think that benefits about Dot Me? Do you uh, think duh. that has taught us, you know, numerous lessons about? How we should do A/B testing, how we should be iterating all the I time. I gotta get Heaton on the you program. You know, all these kind of, Heaton is phenomenal. This would be right? like an incredible because I have right. so many embarrassing stories about this kid. I cannot wait to have him on because I've seen this kid where he likes to drink the <laughs> vodka and the Red Bull. Last night he was drinking water. Was he really? <laughs> there you Let go. me tell you something. That's a good thing because I think it takes about six ounces of water. It takes about six ounces of ice, Red Bull, and vodka for this kid to be just <laughs> boom. That's He's a lightweight. But anyways, so, having, to me, I mean, so being on Heaton's board, being yeah. involved with this company has benefited Lovely. about dot me. Being involved with Peter, oh no, I meant by the way, I meant Crudel, not Heaton. I always get those two. Oh, there you go. But being involved, Heaton had a baby. Yeah, yeah. Crudel's the one. Crudel, just so Heaton, just so Heaton and Crudel. He, he, I think Heaton's like rolling over, like I'm a drinker. Heaton's now. like what? I'm like a, you know, I'm a dad. Crudel is the one who's, but Heaton is like he's a very, he's an intelligent, so, well considered so, so guy. Pete, so Peter and Ryan from Gadget, yeah, they're part of my advisory team, ah. you know, um, which is great. Veronica, who is Ryan's girlfriend, is part of my yes. advisory team. Did These Mahalo are, Daily, you know, yeah. Matt Mullenweg's part of our advisory team. Yes, you know, great this guy. is like I'm on WordPress. So you think these things don't help our business? Of course. They do. Of course they help, right? So it's very symbiotic. And but then so, these outsiders, so when, it's really interesting when these outsiders are like, oh my God, it's such a conflict of interest. They didn't realize like, it's like just everybody's friends and everybody supports what each other, everybody else does. But from the outside, I think looking in, you're like, oh my God, this is like some big grand conspiracy. So, so when AOL offered to buy our first business sphere and then they followed through in, do, in, in doing so, I always say that's like the most flattering moment mm. for an entrepreneur. Oh, yes. Almost no matter what happens afterwards. I know it's hard to divorce yourself from your idea, but you know, and they may screw it up, they may not screw it up. It doesn't right. it's like it's an incredibly flattering thing to have happened. Oh, and yes. it's a thing where I always say you have to take a long term view and you need to be respectful. Mm -hmm. So having stayed at AOL for those eighteen months and continuing mm -hmm. to work on the product um, was one form of respect. But when I left and Tim asked me if I would continue to be involved, I agreed to be a special sure. advisor at AOL Ventures. Um, I also offered him an opportunity if he wanted to invest a little bit of AOL money oh. into About.me. So they were one of our, our angel investors. Right. And that creates a platform for dialogue. It creates right. a foundation right. of trust. It's a signal. It's saying, hey, I like you. Right. Right. It's the same thing I did with Mark Cuban. He invested in Weblogs Inc. The second I, and, and vice versa, the second I did Mahalo, he said, oh, take the profits from Weblogs and put it into Mahalo. There you go, Cubes. Great. That's, I mean, that's, isn't it amazing? That's He's a like, great oh, long term way, That's like, you know, a guy like, you know, basically hits a jackpot, gets all this money, and then goes, oh, um, you know what, let's double down on the same guy. Perfect. There you go. So. How come I'm not a special advisor to AOL? I just saw their, you see their like 400 page plan? It's all Blogsmith, and basically my plan from 2005. I mean, where, hey, Tim. Oh, the AOL way? Yeah, the yeah, AOA. I, I was like, wait a second, I wrote half of that. It's literally, <laughs> well, I could see. Then it's, that's why it's smart. That's why it's well it's done. It's brilliant. There you it's go. It's brilliant. I, 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 there's a couple of tweaks that need to be made. I, I should do an episode where I just walk through that and just say, this is where, there's a couple of little tweaks. Well, you should uh, offer your tweaks. I'm I'm sure it's, like it's like open source. It is like open input. source. I love the fact that they must have leaked that themselves. What do you think of AOL's plan? I mean, um, it's hard for you to say anything like, oh, critical of them, I guess, but I think you're a pretty honest guy. What do you think? Um, I, think it's do you a, I think it's a huge job. And I think the only way that it works is it's got to start with great people. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know He's it's such a that. cliche. David, um, I mean, let, let's, look, the right let's look at the team that, you know, let's start with Tim. Yeah. Tim's a great guy. 
right? He's a, he's a special, I mean, he's a very smart, very special guy, a very big player in our ecosystem, has been for a long time. He right? is good he at getting it. the money he in. He gets it, right? And also getting the right people on the team. That's right. That's and his he's, skill, right? He's, he's done, that's the first thing he's done. He's like stopped the bus and said, a bunch of people probably get the right get people off, on the bus. And let's get the right people on the bus. Not right. that those other people were bad. No, just, it's just not the like, right people for this people. time. Yeah. That's right. And so he started off with that. Guys like John Broad, yeah. uh, Brad Garlinghouse, um, David you know, Ann. Jared Groost, David Unn. Yeah. I mean, these are all very accomplished people. And then you see what's happened. Let's look at Brad's group. He's got Mike Mazur, you know, ex Dig, uh, Kirsten Hollers, ex Dig, uh, Jason Shell, and ex Google. I mean, they're Grizzly, real, these are real uh, Chris product Weatherall, people. Chris Weatherall, ex Twitter. Before that, Google. Mm -hmm. He's got you know, product people. He's got Ryan Freitas now from Adaptive Path to About.me. Me. Right. Myself. He's got great people involved right. in this company. So I think, you know, I think there is a legitimate shot. You know that this company will, you know, continue to kind of evolve and, and make do what the great brands do. Make the transition from dialogue mean, to content. Does it mean there's not difficult steps along oh, man, the way? I would not take that job. You know, I would take that job. Well, I don't know if I take that job. It hasn't even been two years. It's, it's like it's so unrealistic to believe that you could take. I mean, it's. I mean, it's like Obama. You know, it's like. <laughs> yeah, they're like, you, hey, wait you, a second. Can you, like, look what I'm dealt. You know, like, can I? Yeah. The foundation's great, but like, right. wow, there's a lot of new stuff. They basically gave him two seven. I think Tim is on his way to do it. I think things. he is. I like Tim actually. So I'm excited about that. I'm sort of disappointed that they didn't offer me the job. <laughs> I mean, what's so funny about that? It not be the, I mean, it is my business plan. No, I'm too crazy to be. The question you should have asked was, would have uh, I've come to work for you? That's a good question. Let's hmm. table that. I don't know. I probably. The question really was, would you have hired me? I, I'm getting better <laughs> at that. I get better at that. You know, like I, I got Jason Rapp in. I mean, it took me Jason's a while a to guy. get him into here into Mahalo. Uh -huh. And to be honest, he's the president. I'm the CEO. But I, to even say we're peers, I mean, basically he's like, here's what you need to do. You know, like a business. Like this is this is the bullet points of what we need to focus on. So, a lot of times people get caught up in the CEO title. I think a little bit too much. I think founders do, yeah. Yeah, they have fights about it sometimes, don't they? Yeah, but I, it's like, I get it. I mean, it's fun being CEO. It's fun, is it? You know, yeah, but you know. I don't know about that, man. Is there, is there a better title than founder? No. That's it. I mean, that's the goal. I mean, when you're in the Valley and you're in Valley-centric com companies, yeah, I founded respect it. if they're in Illinois or No, there, I'm Sergey Brin. I founded this. Like, like being the founder, that, that's The it. creator. That's it. You're the godmother. That's the, that's the title you want. Yes. And then your question should be, what do I? Who do I need to bring on board? Actually, is I what I think the reason why WordPress is a phenomenal company is because it starts with a phenomenal founder mm -hmm. in Matt, right. right? Who, you know, I'm sure looked at this and thought like, oh, I, you know, I'm I'm a young founder and I want to be CEO, but he recognized that he could get a partner in Tony Schneider, right? An accomplished guy, right? You know, in our space. And he was able to check his ego hmm. because he knew to get Tony on board. Tony, Tony's not going to come and be, you know, VP, you know, of a five-person team. No. You know? It's like he's no. going to come and he's going to be Matt's right. partner. He's going to be the CEO. And it's been a That's great collaboration. That's what great founders understand. And when Tony came in, I mean, the thing went 5X. I mean, it may have gotten 5X anyway, but, I mean, Tony seriously it got it there. immediately impacted it immediately. right away. Yeah. Um, that's not to say that Matt couldn't be a CEO. Was that something I'm sure Matt, Matt wanted sure, to do or no, that you guys counseled but, him to do? But, it's not, it was neither. It was neither? It was an opportunity that presented itself. Ah, Tony was available. Tony was available. It was time for, he had, you know, we had sold odd yep. posts to Yahoo. Yeah. Tony went and, and ran, I think, their developer network. Right. Um, you know, we were, he was a co-founder in Sphere at the time. We were part of, you know, getting True Ventures off, off the ground. And Matt was forming his company, and we were the backer of it. And so Tony got to know him, and mm. it was just a very good fit. Tony had a moment where, you know, he could make that exit. Mm. Perfect. Top three companies you passed on. Ooh, let's hear them. Come let's on go. Now. All right, let's go back into the well. Vroomba. You know the Vroomba, the robotics vacuum little cleaner yeah. thing? iRobot. iRobot. Yeah, sure. Vinicia, that was um, Venetia Contagoras from Trident. Who was the person from MIT who Roddy I, Brooks? I, I don't remember I their names. It was there was a woman and a, and a guy I think that, it was that were the founders. And they came in, and we could have done that deal with Trident, and we didn't. Um, just wow. there was just too much. Um, wow, it's too high of a price and robotics. Who wants that? Yeah. And I remember thinking, like, I love this thing, and like, who likes? So to, you loved like, it. Who likes to vacuum? You loved it, but robotics hadn't worked before. 
So the reason you didn't pull the trigger, the reason you lost all, all that the money. wrong reasons, hardware, expense, you know, like lots of things that like, well, okay, are these the entrepreneurs who are going to figure out how to overcome that stuff? That's the real question. Ah, so you, you know saw I mean? red flags. You and your partner oh, saw red flags. You go into it, there's a ton of red flags on that one. But you right? couldn't get over them because you had bias? Um, we Signal could, bias? We couldn't actually, it's the worst case, right? Where you got a couple people want to do, a couple people kind of don't. Oh, there's not split enough. Decision. I think Tim Draper, I, I don't know Tim all that well. He was an investor, a co investor in Odd Post. But, you know, Tim Draper says, you know, his best deals are where, like, there's this visceral reaction in the mm. partnership and there's one or two people that really got, they got to do it and right. like, the rest of them are against it. And um, I think we had this one where we were, you know, it was a B plus. Mm. You know what I mean? You couldn't quite get everybody there. Is that what, it, now, taking that, not that situation, but in a situation like that with a partnership where you sort of agree that everybody has to be on board, that's the sort of, sort of standard thing you hear for VCs. All the uh -huh. partners have to agree, basically. Not in our partnership. No? no. Two thirds? One? No. One. I think we, look, I think we have enough trust in each other because right. we've all been doing this for a long time. We have track records, and so there's yeah. something you can look at to say, okay, right. he's not totally but crazy. But if somebody tells you but you're if, crazy if, if you invest but, our but money I, in this, I, but what happens? I, you know, I won't tell you which deal, but there's a deal that you know I I, I, co I led or you know invested in, and you know somebody I think, was like, I think only Tony and I wanted to do it, and I think everybody else was like, oh, that's crazy, and um, hmm. you know, jury's out. I right. don't know if that company is going to make it or not. But what does it do to a partnership when you pass on something that you had a chance to get into? What happens then? It's like, do, do, do people bring, is it like people bring it up, like a spouses bring up like some transgression in the past? Like, no. oh my God, well, you I, made us miss Facebook. I probably in most partnerships it does, but not. Really? Yeah. Because it's course. ammunition? Of course, because a lot of people are trying to, you know, like, like politics. It's the guy's like, I, what do you mean? I had the chance to do Twitter, and you guys, you, you guys nixed, you shot you know, it you down. nixed it, and this is my personal track. You know, like it becomes very individual. Yeah. In our case, just because what I just told you, honestly, it's my own fault. I, why didn't I thump the table? I could have done it. Right. So you should have lobbied more. Gonna, nobody was going to tell me not to do it. Mm. Okay. You, so that's you're one. Just I out there on that limb a little bit on your. On your Give us the next one. Um, there's a couple others recently, um, uh, and, let's and hear him. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that I know if they're going to be great businesses or not. But one is Zocdoc. Which uh, Kosala yeah. went and invested in. I think that idea is incredibly, What's incredibly powerful. Um, figuring out, um, you know, so I, I've got an earache. I want to go see the doctor. You, you make that phone call. It sucks, right? You know, like oh, we can get you in two or three weeks. Right. Their whole, I think their whole. It was a tech crunch. The whole company. industry. The whole industry is about the whole doc. You know, medical industry is about like. Well, it'll just go away. The problem right. will go away. <laughs> this, Nobody wants to book he, a meeting. Well, let's see if he really has a problem or if he's just, you know, crying uh, wolf, you know, kind right. of a little bit. So they make it hard to get an appointment. There you go. For that so reason. ZocDoc, you go on there and there's all these, you know, um, you know, optometrist oh. or whatever it is, you know, you need something. Here's the meetings that are open today. Here's, here's the cancellation. There you go. There's a cancellation. There's a spot right there. I can grab Boom, it. I'm in. Boom, I'm in. Love it. They take out the They friction. do it in New York City. So um, they were a tech for this guy they, Cyrus. They, Cyrus, Cyrus came out of uh, McKinsey. I think McKinsey knows a lot about the healthcare space. I think he's an incredibly bright guy, um, and I think he was very f smart to focus it on a geography and build scale. Yeah, like Yelp did. You, there do you it go. right in one market. There you go. And I, I think it's a very, very big idea. So I love that. Um, last one. Last one. Another one. Chartbeat. Ah. Love Chartbeat. You, ah, the yellow, Oh, you didn't get into Chartbeat, did you? I didn't do chart. Do you know who the first angel investor is? Is that you? That would be me. Oh, first advisor. Oh, look this at is, that. Here's my chirpy story. John Borthwick shows it to me. I said, this is amazing. Let me invest. It is amazing. He goes, well, we're not actually taking investing. I said, you know what, John? If you send me a company every month from Betaworks and say I should invest in it, and then the one time I ask you that I want to invest in a company, you tell me no, that's a tell. I'm a poker player. That means you don't want to share the good one, but if you're sending me something, you're sending me the ones that you don't want. And he goes, I never thought about it that way. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, hmm. oh, um, God. And I'm like, yeah, that's why I play poker, because I can read. And, I, and he said, OK, I'll make you an advisor and give you advisor shares. And I said, OK, fine, but I want a commitment right now that I am first money, whatever the first next round, whatever the, whenever you take outside money, I want my check to be the first one in clear. And he, he gave me the opportunity to do that. And what a great company. Great company. And all your companies use it. Yes. And so that's where when you see the people, you know, like, hey, everybody's eating the dog food, that, <laughs> that must be filet I was oh. in a nonprofit board meeting last night for Grist.org. Yeah. Um, the, so it's a, it's a what is that? Chris.org. Grist. Oh, Grist. G R I S T. dot org. What is it? Um, they're bringing awareness to environmental issues. 
issues. They do okay. it through a lot of kind of um, the onion-esque type uh, oh, satire sweet. and fun. They've been at it for 10, 11 years. So they awesome. were doing it when it wasn't cool. I've heard of it, yeah. It's, it's a big organization, yeah. great people on the board. Wendy Schmidt's on, oh. uh, Matt Mullenweg, myself, awesome. John Alderman, um, a, lot of great, cast. a lot of great people. Um, but anyways, um, and in the, you know, it's a nonprofit in the middle of the we got this great tool, chart beat. And you're like, oh, like, oh cat is. <laughs> <laughs> and I tried to invest in pumpkin head. <laughs> I tried to invest in pumpkin head, and you guys didn't let me. I was like, that's that a good was late, man. I know, but come on, give a brother one percent, man. I would, I would, that would have been what, fifty x? Uh, it would have been a great deal. What would I make? Twenty x? You would have been a great deal. Ten or twenty x in a year. A, a great in that range. Deal. In that range. A great. Deal. It would have been ten x in a year. I knew it. It would have been. All right, let's do the shark tank, and then we'll go home. Who's on the shark tank? We're back with a Shark Tank. Tyler, incredible insights this episode. You, you have anything to say about all this? You're just checking in. I'm in listening mode. I mean, this is an incredible interview, isn't it? Tony's yeah. so honest. Yeah, I, I think it's contextually one part you didn't bring up, which I think bears What's saying that? is that True is uh, the most liked, uh, well loved you know, firm in the. Bay Area, yeah, San Francisco. In the Valley. yeah, amongst entrepreneurs, it's yeah. the most very much respected like as the most entrepreneur friendly, and yeah, things. I mean that's something you guys curate. I, you work on. I that. think it's genuine because we've genuine. all started businesses, dude. Ah, so nobody and we, there and, is and, like and a pure you know VC. All you know the point. The, the point is, not only did we start businesses, there's three of us that are currently running businesses. So you're like, you're, you're in the come trenches. To a, I, when I go to a partnership meeting, which I don't always do, I miss mm. a lot of them, right? Because I'm, I'm busy with about.me, I can't tell yeah. you, like, that is my focus, right? But when I go, you know, there's a perspective that comes with it mm. every day. All right, who do we have on the Shark Tank? It's uh, Mickey, is that you, Mickey? It's uh, actually Mikey. Mikey, Mikey, how does it Mickey? Yeah. All right, Mikey. Mickey. Mickey's with the, like the mouse. Right, and you're Mikey. Yeah, for sure. Mikey, you're calling from the 404, which I'll immediately recognize as a Skype number. No. Nah, for it. Come on. You know Atlanta. It's Hotlanta. Hot <laughs> yeah, the ATL. Uh, yeah, I'm down with the ATL in Hotlanta. I drink that. Uh, what is that? What do I drink with the, the codeine syrup? What do I drink? Is it, what's it called? The purple drank? Yeah, when I was down in the ATL, we were getting the purple drank on. I was on an airplane yesterday. Do you know what purple drink I was is? Flipping, no, I don't, but I was oh. flipping through the channel more interesting, and, and I watched the hot it. housewives of, the desperate housewives of Atlanta. Oh, my God. Those girls are out of control. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's like a train uh, no, wreck right there. It is. Purple drank. Purple drink. Purple drank, for people who don't know, is what I was on like two weeks ago when I was on the program, and people were like, are you high? And I was literally <laughs> on codeine. And oh, that it's purple cloths, drink. Oh, purple yeah. drank is... The Robitussin, but it's a different name for it. It's like Robitussin with codeine. So I had this terrible cold, and I'm, my doctor. Is this what, is this what uh, Mikey or Mick, uh, Mikey's pitching Mikey, us? Mikey, purple drank. Yeah, it's just purple, right? purple drank. Not, I'm not pitching it. I'm not We're on in. it either. No, but you <laughs> in? no, but so then type purple drank onto YouTube, and you see all these people like, yo, yo, what's up? An ATL. I'm making a purple drank right now, <laughs> and they take out a two liter Sprite, <laughs> and they take the codeine thing they're drinking, and they pour it. In. You see right here. That's the purple dry, how we do it at ATL. <laughs> and then they take um, Jolly Ranchers and they crack them up. And I'm like, this guy looks like he's making crack. He's cracking Jolly Ranchers. They put the Jolly Ranchers in. I don't know what purpose that is. <laughs> and they're like, and then we do it like this. And the guy's like in the front of a car. Driving through Atlanta, like with the seat down, like this. Yo, what's up? We got the purple drink, right? <laughs> He's got the thing. And he goes, We're making a purple drink over here. <laughs> it is the ATL. But it turns out, if you drink this purple drink, so you put it in Sprite. You put the gold in Roman Justin in Sprite, and you put crushed Jolly Ranchers in, and you are the purple drink. But if you drink purple drink, there's like three or four guys who died in, from purple drink because they drank so much of it. That codeine is a suppressant, and then if you also have alcohol, you die. Oh, it's like a speedball or something. So I right? would just like, it's, like it's one syrup. They call it Cezero. Wow. It's, <laughs> it's syrup. Is so anyway. That's what, I think this is what Little Wayne went to jail. Like, and I'm like, how do they get? He went to jail because he had a gun. Okay, but I think he was on Cezero as well. I don't. Do you not know anything about hip hop culture? I, yo, I, mean, I am <laughs> deep in the hip hop on. game. You you heard me with my Cezero recipe. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I will make some Cezero on this show and we will drink it. Okay, 
Mickey, you called in for a Sazirup <laughs> recipe. <laughs> this poor guy, <laughs> Mikey. <Right. laughs> you call Mickey when we're tired, we're going to kick gonna you. Hang up. I'm sorry, it's the Sazirup talking. Yo, Mikey, I think right we now. We were having purple abandoned. drank. This is, this is you got to recognize right, the yellow flags, right, man. Right, abandoned. Right. Mikey, 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 <laughs> you know the rules of the Shark Tank. I do. You have 60 seconds. <clears throat> You have to drink four ounces of purple drank, <laughs> and then Sounds you pitch good. us. And then we will do purple drank every time you say you pivoted. All right, you ready? Yeah, for sure. Three, two, go. Okay, I think you guys would agree, music plays a part of most people's everyday lives. The problem is accessing your music when and where you want. Moog solves this problem by storing your entire music library in the cloud. This way, you can listen to all your music on any computer, any browser, anywhere in the world without having to download any software. You can take your music on the go with the Moog iPhone and Android apps. This also helps eliminate the need for syncing multiple devices. And because it streams the music, you don't have to spend hundreds more for a large, st larger storage device like a uh, iPhone 32 gigabyte. Um, Steve Jobs is not going to like that. Uh, we offer a free one gigabyte storage plan as well as an unlimited storage plan for just $2.99 a month. So now with Moog, you can listen to all your music at home, in the office, in your car, on an airplane, basically anywhere you can get an internet connection. And that's Moog, your music in the cloud. Boom! Perfect 60 seconds. Whoa! Uh, rack him. He got it there. Rack him up, folks. The purple drag is on today. Let's get that Sazirup going. I, if I had a Sazirup right now, I would do a shot for you. That was awesome. Uh, okay, so uh, typically what we do here is we rate it on a scale of 1 to 10 for the pitch and 1 to 10 for the business. Tony, since you're the guest, let's have you go first. What well, did you on, think on of the, the pitch on a pure pitch, pitching basis? The pitch, I'm going to give him a 9.9. .9. Wow, almost perfect. Almost perfect What did pitch? you like about the pitch? Because he was concise. He had it down. He was mm. prepared. To he the came point. in. He gave it. Boom. I got the framework of his idea. Right. And his okay. idea is what? How would you describe his idea? Give me, you give me back to me. Oh, I mean, <laughs> a, no, not in a minute, <laughs> but just in a sentence. I need, I need an hour. <laughs> no, no, but yeah, I mean, you're a VC. Um, no, he's just going to take my music collection. He's going to help me store it in the cloud so I can access it whenever I want, however I want. Perfect. Boom. That's exactly what I thought. I, I you know what it. I thought? I thought Dropbox for MP3s. That's what I thought it was, too. I thought Dropbox for I, MP3s. I was gonna, I was, Perfect. Dude, you, that, we're simpatico. We, I, I was, that was what I was going to say. Really? Don't, you know what? You're, like Jason's reading my notes over Did here. Did you write? <laughs> Look what I wrote! Dropbox for, <laughs> I put Dropbox for MP3. Did you put Dropbox? No, man, I read yours. <laughs> oh, you're such a liar. Okay, okay, okay. Now, on the business idea, 1 to 10, what do you think of the idea on a scale of one Ah, to now the business idea, mm. um, you know, uh, boy, ten is the most brilliant. Ten is <laughs> music, brilliant. Music, music for a lot of investors is like going back into Vietnam. You know? That is Vietnam right <laughs> it's, there. It's Yo, like wow. Napalm. <gasps> Whoa. You cannot not like Afghanistan. There is you know, no winning. It's what I call one of the you know the sexy businesses. You know music, yeah. film, wine. You know sport. Yeah, it's like these are like things that um, a ton of people are doing them, and, and therein lies somewhat the problem, right? Right. You know, as soon as this is like works or shows some promise of being cool um, it's it's music industry uh, music yeah. industry or you know competition Apple. you know all that so it's a space that traditionally um, I have a bias against. I'll Scary. give you a couple of good examples of mm. that bias. Peter Rojas, who we invested in, you and I both, yes. started Record, record Label. Record Nothing label. wrong with Record Label. No. It just, I said to Peter, dude, I would write you a check, and we will write you a check for that because we're backing you, but honestly, we don't want to go back in there. Yeah, All music right? is We just don't want to go back ouch. to the music. The other guy, Ethan Diamond, mm. who I backed at Odd Post, right. Right, who you know is largely credited with ushering in DHTML mm. or Ajax, um, you know, Ethan came and had this passion for Bandcamp, and uh, you know it was. It's like Woo! And it's like really, the siren song on the he rocks. He really was going to do it, and the rocks, yeah. like we were going to back him. And mm. you know what? What a great investment! Right, but it great is a little scary investment. You so can't be one, disruptive in music. Off the top of your head, just an initial thing. You think on as a business level, seven, eight, nine, ten, what? Uh, I give it six. Six. But I tell you, I take another media. I, it's the one I dig into. You, yeah, because maybe there's something that it could evolve into. I would deeper. definitely dig into because you know our job as investors mm. is to figure out how to disrupt, right. right? To see where change needs to be made. Right. 
and the entrepreneurs always see where the change needs to be made before us. Right. Always. So you assume that they're smarter than you are in well, that regard. I assume that they're smart. I assume, I assume that they've seen something that they're not right. twiddling their thumbs. Ah. You know. There is some inspiration. Tyler, what do you give it? Uh, pitch. I'm going to give it an eight, and I'm taking a point off because mm. we've heard this song before. No mm. pun intended. Um, song remains the same. No. Though the idea of your music library in the cloud. Right. It's not doesn't rank high in the novelty factor. So I wanted to hear specifically how your What's different? What's your unique approach this time? Why you've got the yeah. magic Yeah. What's your special stuff. sauce? Right. That MP3 locker and the half dozen others. Yeah. That have tried. That have right. tried. Okay, yeah. good. What's I, don't, the I, don't wanna, I don't I don't expect to hear that in the first minute. No. That's but, unfair. Well, no, Tyler's got a high framing. benchmark. Framing. Boy. Do you also want to hear who's invested or who, yeah. who's got around the table? And, and we, like, you know, like, absolutely. Like, and we like to get the last three months. In there? I, well, I, if this is the company, is this M O G? Yeah. It's uh, M O U. No, it's M O U G G. M O U G G G G. Okay. Okay. That's we we, we got to talk about URLs. Because of another music. <laughs> that's a, that's player a fine the, one to start with, but it's got to be not you. Yeah. Okay, Tal, give me. There's a, a player in the game called M O G that uh, I thought was. What is the um? What do you give it as a business idea? Much time. It depends on. On his, how his, what his X factor. Okay, is. so hard for you to give a number. Yeah. But off the top of your head, if you had yeah. to put a gun. Every, to everyone head. wants that. I mean, why is it not? Of course, it's a ten. It's something everyone wants. It's a question of how are you suited to. Ah, so it's got a ten potential. Of course, I've, yeah. everybody you know, wants I've, that. I've got a car that it w wouldn't it be great if you didn't have to put gas in your car? Great. Well, okay. Yeah. How are you going to do that? Is what go to the Tesla dealership, right? Here. Well, uh, and hence why Elon Musk is Elon Musk. And he got a billion dollars. He figured out a way to make that happen. Yes. So. Uh, I give it a um, 8.5 in terms of the pitch. Um, I agree with Tyler. I did hear some unique things like, hey, you're going to have an Android or do have an Android or iPhone client that streams it, kind of like that. I also like the fact that you included your marketing plan, a, a gig free. Um, I would have liked to hear about a little bit of um, maybe families and auto syncing with iTunes or something like that. I'm assuming that that's in the plan. If somebody just had that, because my Sonos does that, but it doesn't do it in the cloud. So boy, would that be a big winner because hey, you know, if I had my house in Kona, my house in um, uh, Nice, yeah, and my have, house a lot of in people have that problem. Sydney, and then my house in New York, and then my house in LA, my seven houses. If those seven houses, music collections on the, because there's 15 rooms in each house, except for the one in um, you know, Monte Carlo, which is 30 rooms. but. Anyway, the point is, all those could be synced, and I wouldn't have to send my MP. I, would, I could fire my but guy who manages MP3s for me. That's not the application. But it could all be in the cloud. That's no, but nobody. That's but it's not like, for people with more than not, seven houses. No, it's not for people with more than seven houses. Oh. You know what it is? What is Come it? to your house for dinner. Yeah. And I want to roll my tunes. Ah, and I you log in. The, and I didn't bring my oh, snap. device. Oh, So you go up Boom. and you log in. There you go. Log I love in. It. Let I me. Love or like, here, have you heard this new tune? It's hot. Right. Let me show well, you. Well, you man. know, people Boom. are. I don't you, have my computer with me. You know, I don't want to listen to it on my on, device. I'm not going to give you my earbuds. You know, people are on Dropbox right now, sharing folders and bingo. booming, bango, bingo. Um, Mikey, you did a great job. Everybody's intrigued. You. you might get a second meeting out of this. Um, to be honest, you're going to have to move the company from Hotlanta. No offense, but to no, the I Valley. understand that. Um, Got to change that name, man. In name, but uh, well, I'll give you a, a minute, a minute, one minute to rebut. And then Tony yeah. needs to go to a meeting. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, we're different as far as if you look at our competitors. There are we're, we are actually a lot different than Dropbox. Dropbox, uh, you can share your folders, but you also can't play your music. This is actual an actual music player that sure. you can play right now. You can download the app in the the iTunes Store in the Android Market, and you can actually stream your music right now. Uh, so it is different. You can't share music in between your friends uh, through this service. It's not like a Dropbox, so you can't share the folders. Um, at, at our price point with the freemium model, we feel it's really beneficial for people just to give it a try. It's kind of a new idea. We really want to hit the mass market. So it's a new idea and trying to explain to people what exactly it is. Can more than um, one person log in at a time? Uh, like if I have like right. a, or I should say, if I'm logged in at home and I'm also logged mm -hmm. in at my office, does it not work? No, it'll work currently okay. because if you log out, obviously you're going to have an issue there. Um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, there's we're still working on it. We okay. we've launched just about three months ago. Uh, we've actually come up with a pretty exciting 
idea how to mix something between this and some uh, other ideas that other people have had that are really large. Mm. Uh, I'm not going to get into that right now. So uh, well, yeah, we're definitely excited. Thank you so much. You did a great job on the program. And uh, if you're around on February 23rd and 24th, you are my guest at the um, you're my guest at the uh, launch conference. And Thank uh, you. can you make it? Um, I. I'm pretty much going to have to be there now. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I'll here's, be there. So I'll, I will raise the stakes for you. Uh, we'll make it two tickets, and I'm going to give you a table so that you okay. can open up your hotness and show it to everybody. And by hotness, okay. I mean your laptop. Yeah, that sounds <laughs> great. All right, so uh, make sure you email me after the show. Uh, Tyler, thank you uh, for uh, being in the room and, and another <laughs> successful show. <laughs> no, you had some good insights. Um, Tony, wow, what a great interview. What can I say? Uh, you were totally honest and awesome and uh, continued success. And Thank you. It's been wonderful working with you and learning from you on the GDDDD board, the gadget board. Uh, congratulations on the sale of about.me. Thank you at MailChimp for making my life so easy and so wonderful and so simple. The launch newsletter thanks you. E -e 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 -e. And at GoToMeeting, I am going to get out of this room right now and I'm going to an at GoToMeeting because I'm going to be talking to the top companies who have applied to launch. Thank you so much, everybody, and we'll see you next time on This Week in Startups. Nice. That's what it's all about, man. They said, money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. Yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Yeah. Money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. Yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you.